Hello, how are you guys doing? That's real peaky. If I talk directly into the mic, it's a problem. If I talk away from the mic, it seems like it's fine. So I was working on this the other day, and uh, I guess I can turn off the music. I don't even know why I started it, just force a habit. Um, I was working on this the other day on stream, and people wanted to see how it was going. So I thought I'd show. Um, let me move some of this crap out of the way. Um, I got a cutting mat, by the way. Like an actual one. I threw out the other one. Um, so here is the Puppets War um, Big Mama Cannon, right? Um, is this a pre-stream or a proper stream? Well, Tilda says she's having a, a kind of bad day. Um, like work was kind of rough, I think. So I'm going to I'm gonna try and make sure that I'm here for her when she gets home. Rather than, you know, not. Um, so this may or may not be, you know, the stream for today. Um, I'm going to stop by the time that she gets home. I'll try and do some like Disco Elysium or something at some point today. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's the situation. So I just wanted to work on this. Um, I wanted to do something that wasn't, um, uh, wasn't something normal. So that way if people missed it, it would Elysium, not Asylum. Different. Anyway, uh, so people are asking what kit bashing is. The idea of kit bashing is, and I'm kind of not exactly using it quite right, um, is um, where you take two different things and you, like, two different kits. It was originally for, like, model trains and stuff. You take one train's bits and you put them on another train's bit. Uh, and then you get a different train or whatever. Um, what I'm doing here is the Forge World Kill Tank. I play it on a uh, tabletop sim. It's amazing. It's a great tank. Um, it's 24 wounds, toughness 8. Uh, regenerates health every turn. Sometimes you do damage and it just reduces it down to 1. Um, so y you could be like, ah, I've done... I, I had a guy the other day. He was like, oh, I've done 8 damage with my Melta gun. And I'm like, cool. So I'm going to go and roll. And if I roll a 6, then you... It's only one, and it rolled into a one. And it's like, oh. Um, it's good. Uh, it was. It became less good as soon as Mortarian came on the scene. Anyway, a lot. It's, it's a bastard to kill, and it's really cheap as far as points go. Out of your 2,000 point army, it's 275. I have three of them. So, I mean, whatever 275 times three is is how much my list is this. Um, so it's pretty good, you know? They're a bitch to kill. They just stand around. Um, they absolutely obliterate the new Dark Eldar. But anyway, this is the... Uh, let me see if I get the camera up on my screen so I can see what you guys are seeing. So this is the uh, Big Mama cannon. Um, I think this is supposed to be like a Vindicator based on its size. Uh, these are inches, uh, these little squares. For anyone who's like, I don't know, um, trying to figure out how big this thing is. So, uh, it goes from 6 to 12. So it's about 6 inches. Uh, it's a huge cannon. Ridiculous. And it goes well with the, uh, the Burster Cannon, uh, which is one of the loadout options. Um, I've got some bits to make it a, uh, a Giga Shooter instead, which is a different gun, main gun for it. But, yeah. Um, let me see if I can get the camera so that way it shows the whole thing. So, anyway, but this thing's a bit small. Um, as far as, uh, as far as, like, the model that I'm trying to make it, it's kind of small. And it doesn't really represent all of the things that it does. So, what we're doing today is we're putting some bits on it and we're making those bits so that we can make it look like it's the thing. Um... So, for instance, one of the things that the kill tank has is it has a reinforced ram. So, boop. Right? So, um, I made this little thing out of plastic card. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, plastic card is just like, ooh, that's real peaky. Plastic card is just like pieces of plastic. 
um, that are just like a sheet of it. I'll get a sheet and it'll be square. Obviously I've cut some out of this. Um, you cut it apart uh, into whatever you're gonna try and make. So I got some sprues. So the, the when you buy Warhammer minis, they're on a sprue. Um, let me see if I've got one. So it'll come on a sprue like this, right? And then you've got like, uh, okay, here's a chopper arm for a guy. And so you can, uh, you trim that off, you glue it together onto the body and the head and all that jazz. And then you've got an orc, you know? Um, but after you're done trimming all the bits off of it, all you're left with is like the skeleton to hold everything in place, right? Um, and so what I did was I got some of those leftover sprue bits and I made them into like the, the skeleton for this thing. So it could hold it together. Um, and there you go. So that's there. Am I sad that uh, Warhammer 40k doesn't have Skaven equivalents? It kind of does. It's just like not rats. They're gene stealer cult. It needs to be a bit wider as well. So I've got these bits. I've got like this, this little bit of wire that's hanging out. So you kind of just I think this is actually meant to be on the other side. But uh, the point is that I've put some bits together to make it so that way um, it's bigger and it's longer and it better represents what's going on. So here's another example. Uh, it needs to have a flamer on it. It has a, a flamethrower randomly on this thing. So I've made this little thing. I got a bottle cap and I got a... Uh, I don't know if I can get that where you guys can actually see it. Um, but it's like a, a flamethrower bit, right? I got this from Puppets War as well. It's got like a... I don't know why you would want a bayonet on a flamethrower. That seems silly. But this could be a turret. If I spray paint it, bam, you got a little flamethrower turret on top of the tank. And then... Um, Similar little things are happening all over the place. We got a little driver guy. I don't know if you can see him. This is another Puppets War thing. This is supposed to be for some weird turret walker thing. Uh, are models with lights and or that make noises a thing that exists? Yes, but they're kit bashes. People like me would make them. Um, and I thought about doing that with a Stompa, but uh, I don't want to make a Stompa yet. Um... But, uh, yeah, so you kind of see how this is going to come together. It's like we've got bits that we're going to glue together, and then it'll look and have the same vibe as a kill tank. Let me see if I can pull up the image of the original kill tank. If I wanted to buy these kill tanks um, from Forge World, which is like... I need to remember how much lighter I am on this. Um, I believe... Uh, Kill Bursta. Is that what you call this? Uh, Orc Tank Forge World. I believe it's $123. 155 euros. Uh, no, excuse me. It's $195. Um, here's the original. This is the vibe we're going for. We're going to try and make it kind of feel like this. Right? Without spending this much times three. Um, so, you know, that's, that's what we're going for here today. And I feel like we already have like a pretty decent start for it. Um, cause it's a good model and it's a fun model, but, uh, I don't want to spend, um, I don't want to spend that kind of money. How much was the model you're starting with? I want to say 30. Um, and then the plastic card, I think, was about five bucks. We're not painting today. We're still gluing stuff. So um, one of the things I need to do is I need to make it uh, a little bit longer, like out the back. So let's get this guy out of here. And what I was thinking... Uh... Stupid question, do you have to paint them and stuff 
uh, to qualify to use them. In the new 9th edition rules, you are at a 10 point deficit if you do not paint your models. Um, so, yes. The game, I think, has a max score limit of 100. So, um, you're essentially giving yourself a 10% loss on points. It was a very controversial decision. Um, the main reason it was decided was to make it so that way um, people didn't just... Uh, a new model would be released, everyone would go and buy it, and then they'd show up to the tournament without painted stuff. Um... The unfortunate side effect of this is people who have shaky hands are, are unable to paint for some reason. For instance, they have some sort of mobility issue are uh, exclusionary from some tournaments. You can always pay for someone to paint your models, but that's expensive. It's There's a certain requirement. I think it's three colors is the rule. Um, uh, I think it kind of depends um will this try on uh will this go on the art channel or on after hours it'll go on after hours so because we're just working on this bit i'm gonna move the tank out of the way it's it's a little bit weird what will it take for you to address boggling i don't know what to say about boggling my dude um so it's it's weird that rats do that um but I'll be honest, I have 100% played um, against people who just bought a model literally the day of the tournament, glued it together, and went, hey, I'm winning now. Because new rules were, you know, out um, yesterday. Uh, I believe you can just put three dots on it. Um, so I need this to connect up to here somehow, which means that we need to get more support struts means that I need to dig out yeah I was kind of behind the, the I thought the the gluing or the uh, painting rule was kind of dumb but I was like whatever I don't want to deal with uh, I don't want to deal with those guys you know in tournaments anyway but I mean there's also the thing that like if you're not playing in a tournament you don't have to play that rule um you don't have to play that rule at all. You can do whatever you want. Um, but that doesn't stop it from being in the core rules. In the same way that... Um, um, it used to be that way, where the color of your tank affected the speed of it. Um, it doesn't anymore um generally speaking you want your vehicles to be colored the color of whatever army you are so that way you can let people know like oh hey this guy is from this one and this guy's from that one uh there are workarounds for that um i just color the bases uh it used i mean with orcs it makes sense because that's part of their lore um but uh it wasn't a thing with other factions. And they stopped doing it. Red ones don't go faster anymore. Um, you could still... I mean, like, you would just want to be evil sons that get the ability red ones go faster. And their colors are red. Um, so what I'm looking to do here is I'm going to try and get it so that way I attach this to the inside of this thing. So that way... I don't know if you guys can see that. It's kind of hard to see what's going on here. Toxic, thank you for the 74 months of support. That's very long. That's a, a huge deal. It's a huge amount of time. Um, so I don't know if I've got a good piece of plastic for this. Let's look at some of the sprues I've got. See if I've got a sprue that I could like just trim the stuff off of it. Uh, yeah, sure. So, I'll kind of show an example of how I did the thing in the first place. Um, I like, um, Disco Elysium. I really do. I think it's a fun game. Um, I like the writing. I, I would not have liked it had I had to voice act it. Uh, especially with, um, what's the guy's name? 
the kid that throws rocks at the dead body would not have wanted to do that one um that that would have sucked to have to voice act that um it seems very likely uh kuno thank you it seems very likely that we'll get our codex soon um so for those that you don't play warhammer you've got the core rule book um which is just like here's how you play the game you have the movement phase you've got the shooting phase yada yada um so on and so forth. Um, but then you have a rule book for each individual faction. Uh, I haven't done kit bashing with anything aside from Warhammer. I, I really haven't ever been into model making outside of... I did some Gunpla. Uh, Gunplay? How do you pronounce it? Gundams. I had some Gundams as a kid. They were the cheaper ones that were like 10 bucks or whatever. 10, 20 bucks. I had them down at HEB and I would just... We're falling. We're drifting. I still have you guys taped to the mount. Um, like, it's the same mount that I use for my... Uh, everything. <laughs> I only have one camera mount. Um, so I'm just taping you down to it because the screw for the thing... Uh, just tape you down. It looks like a mess, man. It looks like a mess. Um, uh, Xenos are doing fine, man. It depends on what Xenos we're talking, though. And, um, uh, I used some Mage Knight guys in, uh, D&D &D because I didn't have the money to do uh, other stuff. Codex wise? No, no, man. Competitively, Xenos, uh, Drakari are doing, are going to be doing good. Uh, Gene Stealer Cult is bad. Tau is bad. Orcs are winning events. Um, but it's with a hyper specific build. Uh, that's just buggies. Um, there's also like a lot of people using Smasher Guns because they aren't, um, they were crazy, unlike me. We're still falling? Really? It looks like it's fine. Slowly, but yes. Um, there's like a cobweb of tape. Well, the tripod's not the problem. It's the camera, I'll be honest. Um... I just need uh the other thing is it's in the other thing is it's inverted. So wait, no it's not. I don't have it inverted. I did for the card stream, but I didn't have it for this. Um Let me know if it starts slipping. Anyway. Go ahead and uh got my little bits box here. I'm just going to kind of chuck these bits that I got there. I've. Do you guys want to see how much tape I've got on this thing? Like, is it still slipping? Slipping, slipping. Here, hold up. <laughs> Let me show you how much tape is involved in the rig. Um... All right, I'm going to tweet it. There we go. Uh, so I've taped it down as best as I can. Um, Astromorph, thank you for the 19 months of support. So we're just doing kind of a chill stream. Uh, today. I guess I should pull it up on, uh, on stream so that way people on After Hours can see. I don't know if people even on After Hours would care. Um, there you go. That's what I'm dealing with right now. Um, 
just a ridiculous amount of tape. Uh, and that holds the camera that you're looking at because the screw does not work. Um, so anyway, um, I need this to work out so that way it holds this up, which means that I probably need to get it something like that. So I need to probably trim off these bits here. Um, I should probably wear eye protection for this, but I don't. There we go again. Are you slipping? Should be a uh, 720p picture. Not safe for work practices, I know. I like live on the edge when I'm uh, doing stuff. Cut directly onto glass. Um, I mean, I'm looking away because I did have some all right, all right. We're gonna. All right, hold up. Let's unglue you for a second. <laughs> Untape this whole situation. so much tape there's so much tape uh. all right here's here's the wad of tape now um all right um you guys are right up against the side of the uh the kill tank right now that's like one of the doors for it. All right, all right, all right, all right. So then, let's just, let's le ooh, ooh. Okay, hold up, hi. All right. My hair looks like a mess, ignore it. Also ignore the painting in the background, it's spoilers for this week. Um, Like most of the time when I do paintings, I'm like, eh, you know, but this week I'm like, dude, that's, that's poggers right there. That's some poggers art right there. I say poggers unironically now, I think. I haven't gotten a haircut in this year, so, uh, my hair looks like a mess. You haven't aged a day in 10 years. I don't know about that, man. You look like if Carl Urban had a rough few years. Who's Carl Urban? Carl Urban. Uh, yeah, okay. Fair enough. <laughs> At least, is he like known for being hot? Like, not, not really, right? Uh, okay, well, whatever. Um... You look like a younger version of... I feel like I could be there in a few years. The Disco Asylum guy. Where's the tape? There's the tape. He's known for being Carl Urban. Okay. He looks like me. Is the camera, like, listing now? I don't know why it's doing that. Um, you look like a younger version of Old Rev. Okay. Also, all of the uh, foam that I got for the acoustic foam is falling off the wall. You can see it back there. Um, and I can't help... I can't move one of the squares now. Because Abby likes to sleep on it. So, that square is just there now. Now let's see if I tilt you down 
if everything I just did goes bad. That uncomfortable moment where it slides past my dick for a minute. Okay. Okay. Let me know if it starts uh, listing again. Sorry about the cable. That's just going to be a thing. Ah, oh, okay. So anyway, um, I'm going to trim it right here. It already is. No. No. Don't want it to be. I don't see it, man. I don't see it. I've got the door open because both the cats decided to barge in here. I was doing some stuff with Hootie for the charity event. Um, which, if you're part of the writer's thing, check the Discord. But, uh... They're wearing they Okay, yeah. But I was doing some st stuff with Hootie, and, uh... I don't remember why I was bringing that up. Hoots. Hi, Hoots. We're doing a Warhammer. We're, uh, we're building ourselves a kill tank. A looted tank. Because I feel like a good Death Skulls army needs one. Well, we had fun. I harassed Hootie for a few hours. It was good. Sliding again? I don't know why it does that. Death Skulls are uh, my favorite clan. That's what I ran back way he went. Dude, they're the good one right now. Uh, but Snake Bites are getting a whole bunch of new stuff here soon. Um, they're getting... Uh, I mean, any clan can run them, but they're called Beast Snagas. And they're like squig riding orcs. They look all right. They don't fit my fluff at all, though. Um, they're like, any clan can use that. And I'm like, all right, G-dubs. I know you want money, but, like, how is... How are the most, like, nerdy tech guys... How are they going to implement the guys that don't want anything to do with tech? Like, what? Um, Anon, thank you for the gift sub to a boner 89 Uh, alright, cool. So we got this little, like, thing going here. I think we're gonna just glue this down. I think that's good. So this has been how I've been doing it, is I'll just figure out how it needs to connect and then glue it from there. But, uh... We're just doing it. DIYing orc vehicles is the way to do it. It depends. Like, um, I like the new buggies. I wish they weren't monopose. Because the list that I'm running online has three of the scrap jets, three of the uh, shock jumps, three of these kill tanks, and that's pretty much the list. Um, but that is... <sighs> if I were to buy it officially... With what I own right now, um, my hand is glued to this piece now, so I guess I'm part of the kill tank now. Um, okay, that support strut's actually going to get in the way a bit. But, uh... See, who else is doing good? Oh, Harlequins. As long, if we're talking like, um, if we're talking about Xenos not doing good. Harlequins and um, Sisters. I mean, Sisters are Imperium, but um, I don't think there's any Space Marine faction that's in like the top tier. 
right now. Maybe Space Wolves? Um, but Sisters of Battle are doing real good. Um, Harlequins are doing real good because they just play the mission really good. Uh, how are Necrons doing right now? Uh, they're like B-ish tier. Um, I think Orcs are B tier as well. Um, but they're held back a lot by the fact that the people who are running them, uh, are running... I don't know, it's really, it's really he weird where, uh, the meta is right now. Because, um, you know, some factions have a 9th edition codex, some don't. And no one who's playing IRL has been able to play that much of, uh, like, actual on tabletop 40k. So they don't really know what the meta is, and they haven't bothered to buy new models. So like Orcless look like eighth edition Orcless. So it's just like all the Smasher guns, and it's like, well, I mean that's a list. I don't think it works. Um, I think it's too expensive, um, like money wise. I kit bash my, my uh. And it's kind of a shitty kitbash, and I'm a little embarrassed of it now, in retrospect. Um, let me see if I can find him. Ah, they're, they're like the bottom of my thing here, but uh, I kitbashed them from like cheap 20... It was like, I got, I want to say like... 10 of them for 20 bucks or something like that. Little army men guy. Uh, guns. And I spent, uh... Or maybe it was the other way around. It was real cheap. Um... But, uh... You know, I'd rather do that than spend, uh... $50 per gun? And they're like 40 points? So you could potentially have, uh, 18 of them? Because of the way they deploy. So what is 18 times 50? Um, I don't know off the top of my head. But uh, I don't have that kind of money. Uh, so I didn't do that. When I went to a tournament and ran 12 Smasher Guns, I kitbashed them from cheap stuff because I'm not insane. 900? Yeah. So I think the reason that people are still running them IRL is because they have to justify a $900 purchase. Um, because 8th edition, they were ridiculous. Um, and right now, they're pretty good against, I guess, Dark Angels. They're doing good. Inner Circle's a really solid ability. Um, as far as Space Brains go. I don't know if I want it up this high. You guys seeing this? Like how high that goes? Kind of looks weird. But that would leave plenty of room for, like, a, a, a turret or something. Um, does it have the vibe down? If I, like, plonk this guy here. I mean, that that's a little bit of a collision thing there. 900. And it doesn't mean you win. Because um, I feel like Smash Guns can be played around fairly easy. Um, in that they have a 3-inch movement, but a 48-inch range gun. So it's artillery, but they have to see you. So if you just hide, they can't do anything. Um, how do the model specs change the gameplay? Uh, like how big it is? Um, geez. So um, true line of sight is a thing in this game. Uh, so th this, this gun... Um, let's say this is the Burster Cannon, the, the one that has, like, the, the big cannon like this. Um, that is a 36-inch range gun that, uh, does such and such and such and such, right? Um, so if I can see you, I can shoot you with it, as long as you're within 36 inches. Um, if you change the size or the shape of your model, then you could significantly change the, the way the model interacts with the board. For instance, um, people really like to do gretchen lists. Like, they like to pretend that they could do an all gretchen list, but they're like five points a piece. And it's like, you cannot deploy that on a tabletop. You know? 
Like, physically, you cannot put that all on a table. So, a similar thing's happening here. Whereas this guy, he's titanic, so he can't hide behind things as easy. And there's some rules about that as well. So I need to make him as big as the actual Forge World model, you know? Um, so that way, when someone's playing against it, it feels right. And it doesn't feel like I'm cheating. Because I could just go, yeah, uh, no, I've got this this model right here. Yeah, this is this little, this little sprue bit here. That's This is my kill tank. And... Um, it uh it can murder anything it comes into contact with. Yep, yep, do it right here. Just like mm. uh so a single grot is five points, and you can have any number of them. I think there's a hard cap somewhere, but I wouldn't I don't want to do the math right now to figure out what it is. But uh yeah, whatever two thousand divided by five is and they're each about an inch wide. Yeah, I mean, that, that's part of it. Is if I go like... If I pull out a model and I'm like, alright, this is my Luda. Uh, he's got a death gun. See it? It's like a, a bunch of different weapons strapped together. And uh, it's a heavy weapon. So it means that if he moves, it screws up his aim. Because, I mean, it's strapped to his back, right? Um, and it requires line of sight. So um, I have to be able to see it. So right now, this guy can see that guy because obviously they can. But if I put something in the way, for instance, like, I don't know, this thing that we're working on then I may not have true line of sight anymore, which means that I wouldn't be able to shoot him. You know what I mean? Um, a lot of Warhammer has to deal with that mechanic. So I don't want to have the model be too big or too small in order to gain any sort of advantage from kit bashing rather than buying the official model. Because, again, I'm trying to save myself $600 here. So, you know... Um, and I like the model. I just don't want to spend that much. Uh, if the game depends on owning models solely distributed by the parent company, couldn't they mandate... Well, I mean, yeah. But what they're doing instead is they're just... Uh, making the new stuff good. But, like, they still sell boys models. Like, orc boys. Uh, that are from 3rd edition. That are older than some of the people who watch my stuff. Um, I'm working on a kill tank. Um, I don't think that boys list are very good. And honestly, like, you want it to be like where when someone looks at your model... Um, they know what it is. If I go and show you this model in the end, I want you to go, okay, yeah, that thing probably doesn't care if I shoot it with a pistol, you know? Like, this thing needs actual dedicated firepower in order to take it down. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for something that if I go, this thing has 3d6 shots, and the other variant has 30 shots, whereas most things have, like, one or two shots... I want you to believe me when I say that and go, yeah, of course it does. Holy shit, you know? Like, this gun is ridiculous on this thing. For anyone who hasn't looked up what a kill tank does, it's silly. It is an absolutely ridiculous vehicle. And, uh, I love it. Well, it needs to be as physically intimidating as it is mechanically, so that way you know, you know? Because if I, if I run up to you with this thing, you're going to be definitely more scared of this than a little tiny goblin, right? And you should be, because it's going to murder you. Um, it's one of the most point-efficient models in the game right now, um, and people are sleeping on it. Uh, but I think it's great. Um, it and the Grot tank are really good. If you're an orc player, check out the Grot Tank, man. Uh, how tiny is the goblin? 
Um, tiny. Um, his base is about an inch, just a little bit short of an inch there. The goblin doesn't do much, you know? They get scared easy. Um, and they, they try and run. Pretty much, as soon as one of the guys that they're hanging out with dies, they go, whoa, whoa, I did not sign up for this, and bail immediately. Um, <sighs> ah, that's it. There's this thing. I'm like, why is this not working? Because it doesn't seem like I'm colliding with anything, but... I was colliding with a bit there. All right, can I make it work now? Um, I think I actually need to take out this strut here. Um, I think that was the problem. Yeah, I think that was the problem. And then I just need to make that strut a little bit shorter. So, um, So, generally speaking, kit bashing or using third-party models is acceptable outside of official Games Workshop tournaments, which, of course, they're going to make you use the actual models. Um, but uh, outside that, like, casual games or even competitive tournaments don't really care as long as you put some love into it. And that's what I want this to be as well, is I want people to go, okay, he's not just playing this because, you know... He didn't just kit bash it because he wanted it cheaper. He wanted a different look. And it's true. Like, you know, I want them to look different from each other. Okay, I think this is good. So, I'm going to move this to the side. And then, uh... Hmm. I think this should do. Do you have any painting tips? Um, so for shading, um, honestly, Duncan Rhodes Academy on YouTube, he used to be the guy, he used to be the face of Warhammer painting. Like if you look up old like painting tutorials on, uh, on uh, YouTube for, or just on the GW website on how to paint stuff, He's the guy. Now, he has his own service. He has his own thing that he does. And he does other models. But I highly recommend him as just a guy that you should watch his videos and his content. Because he knows what he's talking about. Um, but when it comes to shading, you know, obviously you want to prime it with something that's pretty easy to, to continue with. Um, isn't $600 for an unpainted model kind of ridiculous? Yeah, I don't I don't buy the... Uh, the the toddler sized models, uh, because that's crazy. Um, but, uh, there's, uh, there's washes. Uh, this is some Agrax earth shade and it's just kind of, it's kind of a liquidy paint and it seeps into the, the gaps of the holes and stuff. So when I paint this, I'm going to, um, I'm going to spray paint it Gilliam and Blue, or McCrag Blue. Um, and then I'm going to shade it, Agrax Earthshade, to get into the gaps, right? And then on the edges of the model, I'm going to use uh, Kronos Blue, which is like this baby blue. And um, 
that'll that'll make it look good. Um, I also got some technical paints. Um, so for example, we got uh, Sterling mud, which has like sand in it in order to make the vase or whatever you're painting look different. Um, So an example of that is here's a base for my flyer that I ha still haven't put together. Um, you've got like the the sandy effect, so that way it looks sandy. It's nice. Um, I can't find any of the recent things I've. Um, yeah, all the colors are named after Warhammer crap. Um, I don't know what Agrax is, um, but you know, there's Rhizo Rust, there's, um, stuff like that. Um, the, the just regular colors, uh, unless if you're trying to mix that color very specifically, yeah, but add some texture at the shades, I think are really worth it. Um, I did it without shades for a while and it's fine. I just think it's a little bit more difficult. Um... So I think that's a way to do it. You don't have to go with the GW colors. Um, I just have been able to look up tutorials where I know what those colors look like. So I don't have to like shop around and find them. Uh, and I can just have the color I want right from the get go. And that's at the end of the day what I want. So um, so this model is, uh, it, so Forge World is the um, rich hobbyist uh, version of Warhammer. It's for like weird specialty models that'll cost like 600 bucks. This model that I'm putting together is not that, but I'm making a model that looks like it so I can use it in Warhammer so I don't have to spend $200 for it. And that's what we're doing today. Um, but yeah, uh, Army Painter has some shades and stuff like that. Um, and you just kind of get into the cracks with them. It's, yeah. And like I said, Duncan Rhodes Academy... I highly recommend his stuff. He does good. All right, cool. So this is the right shape now in order to go on the back of this thing, I think. Um, so we're going to do some rivets now. Uh, Vallejo is good too. Um, GW paints are a little expensive, and a lot of people have complained that the uh, pots are not good. If you look on, like, Warhammer painting things, they meme about how just awful the paint pots are and they that you know they spill their what is it nun oil which is like a black shade it's going good just kind of having a chill stream um i don't know as if this is everyone's thing i don't think it is but you know what I'm just figuring I should stream some because uh, it's been a hard year. It's been a hard couple of years recently. And uh, I just want to hang out. Um, there's really not any Warhammer to play. Um, I can play on Tabletop Sim, but I feel like I figured out my list. Um, so unless if I want to enter a tournament with it. Um, there's nothing else to improve upon until the next... Codex comes out, and Chaos Space Marines are just bad without having support, so I don't know if I really want to pay them. When's the next March on the Mice? Uh, probably the last Thursday of this month. Um, can I sh just show you how obsessive this thing is um, that I've been working on? So that's how I do a ribbit. Uh, Gravy and Biscuits, thank you for the 17 months of support. Um, so I've got this piece of sprue that I've been using as my gluing stick, right? I put a little bit of glue, sloper glue on the end there, right? Um, so just go just the littlest amount, right? Boop, boop, boop. So now there's super glue. And then I just go tap, tap. That's where I want the rivet. And then I take the tweezers.
And that's how I've done all of the rivets so far. Looks cool. Looks good. It's just very slow. Um, but, you know, it looks good. So we're going to just keep doing that. Then you glue your hair. Yeah, uh-huh. I don't know how to make convincing looking like crappy whale weld to a thing. Um, I tried. It didn't look good. Um, so this is uh, just a regular piece of uh, plasticine rod. I don't know what the diameter is. It's fairly small. Just whatever small one I could get. I used it for the wire earlier as well. Um, and uh, it just looks good. Looks like a rivet. Um, and it adds a little bit of definition and texture to the model. So that way when I'm painting it, you know, I could have some like grease running down the rivet or what have you. Um, so that way it doesn't look so samey. Because if it's just a bunch of like flat planes of plastic, it won't look good. Uh, and then I've, I've chipped away at this a bit, like add some like, uh, scratches and such. So that way when I actually do paint it, there'll be divots and I can use the shader. Like I was talking about a minute ago to, to give it a little bit more of a, a realistic 3d look. Um, you know, kind of going at it with the knife. Uh, I'm trying not to keep these edges too smooth. So you'll notice like around this bit, I've cut out a bit and around here and there. Just kind of scrapping it together. I wanted to make it look kind of like crap. Because that's another thing about this vehicle. is It's got the ramshackle rule. Which is an orc specific thing. Where it's just made out of like... Just dreams really. It, there's nothing really holding it together. Oh, this is for orcs. Um, and so it's just kind of crappily put together. Uh, out of just like whatever bits they've got. And uh. Because I don't want it to look pristine and nice. I want it to look like some Mad Max weird thing. You know. Uh, I got a lot of inspiration for like some of the design choices for from Mad Max. Because that movie is. An absolute banger if you haven't seen it. Uh, the new one, Fury Road. I mean, it was from like two years ago or whatever. Um, it was amazing. Um, I loved that movie. I saw it by myself and then I ran into the other room. I started telling Tilda about it and she's like, that's nice. <laughs> uh, it's very much not a Tilda kind of movie. Um, six years ago, War Road Warrior was good too. Um, mid 2010 uh, orcs do power stuff mostly through uh, they were designed to be a very uh, psychic based race the gods that created them intentionally made them to beat necrons um because this one god and the Necron guys were... The god of the Necron guys, the Catan, were fighting. And so they were like, alright, I want something that's self-sufficient. So that way, you know, it'll do the job. And so I'll just make them psychically powerful. But then, like, they got into a fight and then they just kind of left them. So it's like... Orcs are kind of just a leftover biohazard of, like, a fight from before time. They have, like, no real reason to be here. And they're kind of weird, fluff-wise. Like, they're kind of weird that they're in 40k in the first place, if I'll be honest with you. Um... But, I think they're cool. Um, like, you know, you got... I mean, like, space clowns, I think, are weird, too. Um, and exodites, 
Like, what? But, I mean, like, ruler cool. So. But, yeah. Any free time that I've had, rather than, like, work on this, I've been, you know, playing on Tabletop Sim instead. Which is fine. But, uh. means these aren't getting done. I don't want to paint them. I don't particularly know what time Tilda will be home. But, uh... I'll stop when she gets home. So I don't know what time that means that I need to start doing uh, Disco Elysium. Maybe five? Maybe I do something other than Disco Elysium just in case if uh, she comes home. It might also be good to actually... Um, will I do more of these? I could. I mean, I'd like to. I'd like to stream more, honestly. Um, I'm doing good, Skelecorgi. How are you doing? Um, but I just need to find a good slot to stream at, you know? And I don't know when that is. Um, I don't want to... I don't want to step on, uh, anyone's toes when it comes to streaming. Um. Because, you know, I like Mike. I like, uh... I like Limes. They stream at the same time as me. So, uh... And y'all like them, too. So you like to go and watch them. And so rather than make it where you have to choose, which is bad for all of us, finding a time that they don't want to pick, I'm going to be bad and just actually apply the glue directly to the model. And the reason this is bad is because it likes to overflow, and then it goes everywhere, and then it kind of looks like crap, but whatever. Um... But yeah. I got a couple more people onto the uh the Among Us uh server for our uh, eventual whenever it happens um Among Us stream. Um so that that'll be good. Um How's the audio quality by the way? Is it good? Like for the most part? Uh, someone recommended that I do, um, more, uh, it's good. I turned up the gain. I kind of, I was listening to the way, um, that it sounded on the card opening stream. And I kind of like it regular than, or more than my regular voice. Like a lot more. Like it sounds all nice and crisp and it's loud, but like not overbearingly. I think it's because of the placement of the mic. I've also added a bit of gain. Think of it as the 200 gay bits, college students. That's very kind of you. Um, why don't we go until about five? Your nails are long. I know. Um, I'd like to say that it's a guitar thing, but it's just I'm a lazy thing. I'm um, I'm a goblin. I haven't had to go out and see the sun in like months, man. I don't go places or see people. Um, so Do you know why you sound higher pitch in Twitter videos? Uh it's cuz I'm talking to my cats and I I I'm nice to them. Do you wash your hands often? I mean, I wash my hands before I streamed because I had to go to the bathroom. I wash my hands after I do things that require me to wash my hands. Um, or before things that would be nice if my hands weren't dirty. Um, nah, you know, like, didn't you stream the bathroom trip? And you didn't stream. Oh. Cut, not wash. What? <laughs> uh, what was the question? 
do you cut your hands often? No, no. Um, cause I cut away from myself like you're supposed to. Um, not even close. I was going to say that's a weird question, but okay. I don't know. Maybe once I've gotten my second uh, COVID shot, I go and get my hair cut. I just don't like getting my hair cut, honestly. But uh, I also don't want my hair to be like a mess. But I'm kind of enjoying growing it out. But I'm getting a mullet. And it's this awkward stage between having long hair and short hair where I've got a mullet that's kind of not good. And I want to do something different with, like, you know, my face. Um, what plans do I have for painting this bad boy? Uh, like I said, I got the, uh, the McCrag blue. I'm going to um, make the uh, uh, this stuff that looks like, um, like, I don't know, roof siding look uh, rusted. But yeah, I mean, when it comes to hair, I feel like there's a lot of rando uh, people that look like, you know, me. Especially in YouTubing stuff or streaming. It's like, oh, are you this guy? And it's like, no. I mean, it, it's worked out for me. Um, like when I was working at GameStop, people would ask me if I'm me. I said no. Cause I kind of look like a generic dude in a lot of ways, just like more depressed than the average dude. I mean, scruffy looking white dude. It's not an exactly underrepresented archetype as far as streaming goes. Um, so, you know, doing something different with my hair. It'd be a uh, it'd be a way to do that, but I don't want to do like neon colors or whatever. Uh, I want to do something different. I don't know what. Mohawk is the thing that immediately comes to mind. I had this dream. I think I told you guys about this. I had this dream that uh, I dyed my hair, um, but only like down the middle, white. Um, and told her, when I explained that to her, she was like, so you look like a skunk? And I'm like, yeah, I did. And everyone in my dream said that too. It was not a good look. I'm talking like if I had a mohawk, where that would be, but it's just that bit's white. Such an awful look. Dream me is high as a kite, dude. Such an awful look. God, just so many rivets. Um, I just realized that this bit's sticking out. I don't know what that means. Like, people want to be like, oh, dreams mean stuff. Sometimes your dreams are just weird. You know? I guess I should put that in the shot so you guys can see what I'm doing. Uh, there's just a bit of sprue that was left. Is there anything else going on? I mean, like, it wasn't a nightmare because like, I didn't get bullied too much. It was just a weird thing that happened in the dream. You know what I mean? 
Like... So now we've got to add some, like, bits back here. Alright, so we got... Wow, this will do. Um... I want to do something like this in order to hold this together. But uh looks like these two bits are like at different heights. And I probably want to make sure that this doesn't clip anywhere. I'll say that as if it's like a video game. I don't know words, man. Um, hey, Luigi guy, how you doing? Alright, it looks like it won't. Um... So I can put it somewhere like there to there. And that'll provide some like structure for the thing. All right. The emotion show. I'm sorry. All right. So we added a little bit of glue here. But yeah, the ramshackle rule makes it so that way it takes less damage sometimes when you shoot it. Because where you thought was like a very important part of the vehicle ends up being like just random stuff that's been glued onto it or soldered onto it or whatever. Um, and I, you know, that needs to show up in the model. Like you need to see like, oh, this looks like a pile of scrap metal that's just got a big ass gun on it. And that's that's the vibe we're going for. Um, a threat that, uh, you need to deal with, but, uh, it's hard to because of just how, how am I doing? I'm doing all right, man. Um, I'm doing all right. I've been better. I've been worse. Um, I'm doing okay. Taking some time out of my day to make sure I do a little bit of hobbying, a little bit of taking care of me time. But it seems like it's fairly common for people to be streaming like five, six hours a day. So I'm like, maybe I should stream more. Um, so how about I do both? It looks like, so this bit has like a bit of a, a slant to it on this side. So I might need to, uh, there's not a lot of going outside to do. No, no, there's not really. Um, Jesus, what was that? Cooking stream? Well, now the kitchen's nowhere near the, uh, Unfortunately, the, uh, the kitchen's nowhere near the office. Yeah, I was worried that was going to happen. All right. Um, so which side is it that's slanted? It's this one. All right. Well, that's still got some glue on it. Media Refrigerator, thank you for the 47 months of support. Um, we're going to have to come back to this support piece because it's just not going to work right then. Um, there's glue on that bit and I need to sand it down some where I didn't realize I needed to. So I'll just come back to that in a minute. It's fine. Uh, I'm gonna add some more rivets then. Warhammer 40k. Warhammer 40k indeed. Make a huge ass spoiler. It's weirdly fast. Um... Like, is aggressively fast and fairly decent in combat, which is really funny. Because uh, people will be like, oh, well, I'll just tie it up in combat. If it can't get out, you know, it can't use its big cannon in combat. 
I'll be safe from it if I just, like, put my body right next to the barrel, because they wouldn't want to blow themselves up, which is a rule. Um, and it's like, no, I don't care. I'm going to run you over with this ram. It's very good. Um, I still don't understand what's happening. Uh, I'm saving myself $200 currently. That's what's happening. And after I do a few more of these, I'll have saved myself $600-ish. Probably closer to like 500 But I think that's a pretty good deal. Um, running over people... I mean, I did it the other day. Orcs have a lot of stratagems involving running people over. Um... Thank you for making the wood burn thing. Um, yeah. Um, I like that kind of drawing. Um, I like doing that kind of stuff. I wanted to simplify the art style so that way I could uh, replicate it easily. And the lack of colors meant that I wouldn't have to color as much stuff. Wouldn't have to paint. Also meant that doing some shadow work would not be as hard. Okay, stay. Do orcs make good cuddlers? No. Um, they pretty much only think of violence. Um, I mean, even guns are seen as a little bit frivolous. Like, uh. This little bit is glued to the side of the tweezers now. I screwed up placing it on. Um, no, it's just the glue, the tweezers themselves have a bit of glue on them. Okay, just go, go, go on the model. There you go. Awful. Just terrible. No. Be, be there. There you go. Just sit down. Orcs are so small to paint. I don't like their weird asses. I'll be real. Um, I have weird butts. They're all doing this thing where they're like jutting their butt out. Except for the newer models. Their newer models don't have that problem. But it's like something about the way they used to do models. Because again, like they're still using Orc Boys from 3rd edition. Um... So they all have this, like, twerky kind of thing going on. Like, they're about to twerk, but they're in the process of it. But yeah, guns for orcs are just, like, something to do while you're trying to get to the guy. Yeah, and so that means that, like, if I don't totally understand how a tank works, I can... I'll be fine. You know? Mine are... My boys are still on 25s, and, uh... I'm not looking forward to moving them over to 32s. I should do it before, uh... Lockdown ends. I mean, I guess we're out of lockdown... Once I can go outside and actually play this on an actual tabletop, I should have my boys on 32 millimeter bases rather than 25s. Because there's... Smaller base means more boys get in to fight. Because you have to be within a certain distance of the model you're fighting in order to fight it. You know? You have to be close to the model. Um, or close to a guy who's close to a guy. So if you have smaller bases, then you could have more guys fight and if you have more guys fighting they do more attacks and more attacks mean more dead models on your opponent's side so it's kind of gaming uh the the system a bit
but it's not really I just I might get spacers or something to make the bases bigger without actually having to like manually unstick them from their bases and then put them on a new one um, because that sounds fun you know um, but in about 10 minutes here I'm gonna feed the cats and then we'll do a little bit of uh, I don't know something if you guys want to see that's like pretty easy to quit um, a couple minutes in I don't really want to do Disco Asylum because if we start getting into plot stuff and then Tilda gets home and she needs me. And it sounds like she had an exceptionally bad day at work. She sent out a tweet where she was like, hey, uh, send cat pictures. And that's always a sign that it was a pretty bad day. Um, so it could be like dicey. It could be... Um, you should try and paint casualties. It'll suck at first, but it'll get better. Hi, Abby. Hi. What do you have to say for yourself? Uh-huh. What do you think? Okay. Abby likes to complain. It's almost food time. Yeah? Abby, did you know you're a little baby? Abigail. Oh, I see. Well, it's not five o'clock yet. I've got a clock. I've got an alarm. I won't forget. I do love you very much, but uh, you have to wait. Because if I feed you earlier than five, then you'll try and keep gaming the system and keep trying to wake us up earlier, and then we won't be able to sleep. I know. You have to wait until the alarm goes off. Well, don't say no, because that's the way it is. Abby, you're a cat. You have no concept of time. What do you think of that? You should know it's vaguely close to 5 o'clock. I gotta make sure I'm not holding a knife uh, while when it turns five o'clock because they will rush the room and Herman will launch himself into my lap and that can be dangerous. Um, so I kind of like, can you show us Abby? Abigail, where are you? Abby, come here. Abigail. Abby! Here, hold up. Hi, this is me. And then, let me pick you up. Here's my pile of junk. Abby. Hi, Abigail! Yeah, my fingers probably smell like glue. Herman's right here, too. Hi, Herman. Abby is Babby. Got a skull on the floor? It's for reference. The painting in the back looks pog as well. Thank you. 
A little bit of spoiler. Two kitties. Abby, the smaller but rounder one, and the heavier set one. And then uh, Herman, the skinnier, braver one. <laughs> a reject rock star. Man, that's a mood. Yeah, the stuff that is on the pile right there is um, kind of just like... Stuff that goes under my desk normally, but I need my feet to go under the desk, so I can't really put them there. So just for the sake of the stream, I moved them to the side. It looks like a mess, I know, I know, but um, trust me, it's not normally that bad. Um... So, question about this bit. Should I put another rivet, like, here? Or do you think that that's, like, held... Is this bit held in? Like, obviously these rivets don't actually do anything. But, like, mentally, do you feel like I need to have a rip there? I definitely need to have one here and here. And I probably want to have something, like, right here. Like, some weird something. It's good like that. Okay. Just, like, three rivets. I'm going to scuff up the, uh, the siding here a bit so that way it looks a bit more, uh, would an orc care? No, but like, you know, it needs to hold on, right? Um, like it needs to make some mechanical sense to people's eyes, right? Let's use the trimmers. So, I mean, as you can see, this is kind of slow work, but it's good hobby project work because it's like kind of, you know. The Orc Codex is probably going to come out next month um, based on the fact that they're showing off models now. Um, so, with that being said, I don't really want to buy anything. And anything I'm buying is, like I said, we're not out of lockdown anytime soon. So it's more or less just for the fun of painting something. So if this project takes a little longer, that's fine. You know? I don't know how long kill tanks will be good. I don't even know if they'll be good in the next codex. Um, they're, uh... They're part of, like, the... the what are the rules on this unofficial model? This is going to be a kill tank. Um, so, it's uh, 24 wounds, 12 inch move, toughness 8, strength 8, um, 3 up save. Uh, it's got 3 guns. It's got a twin big shooter, strength 5, AP 0, 1 damage. Uh, Scorcha, D6 shots, auto hitting because it's a flamer. Uh, strength 5, AP 1, 1 damage. And then either a burster cannon or a giga shooter. Burst cannon is 3d6 shots, strength 10, AP 3, flat 3, which gets plus 1 to hit if it's within a half range. 36 inch range, so 18 would be half. Um, and then uh, the Giga Shooter, which is 30 shots, um, strength uh, 6, AP 2, 1 damage. It is just a ridiculous... It's... It's what if you put all of the guns on the toughest thing and then you made it good at shooting. It's just a pain in the ass to move. Like if you want to get it off of a point, if you want to get it out of the way, you're going to have to dedicate some actual time and effort into doing that. Oh shit. Guys. Kitties. I wonder if any cats knows that it's time to to eat. Herman, do you know what time it is? Herman. Herman, they're both in here. They're both in here just looking at me like, dude, when is this happening? Um 
All right. Well, I got to go feed the cats. Um, so they don't understand daylight savings time. Uh, so I'm going to go feed the cats and then, uh, I'll stream something, uh, either, um, probably fights in tight spaces. I know I just did that like the other day, but I want to play more of it. <coughs> Can't go through a rev stream without burping directly into the mic. Um, can you confirm or deny that nobody in Texas owns a knife and it's all just guns? Oh, I own a knife. See? Here. Boom. Knife. It's proof. Um, anyway, I'll be right back. Uh, give me a minute to feed the cats and then I'll be right back after that. See you guys in a minute. 